German jet aircraft such as the M-E-262, a medium tank that was used in the mid-World War II. The Army upgraded the original M for A-1 with a better bulkier turret and better hull, thus making the variants Jumbo and 76. <laughs> Hey, it's you again. I didn't expect to see you back here. Welcome to part 2 of your War Thunder journey. As you already know from part 1, War Thunder is a free-to-play combat multiplayer video game developed and released by Gaijin Entertainment, a game where you can play on land, air, and water. Right now, I'm currently in one of the most popular tanks in World War II, the Tiger. This tank was so scary and strong that it was almost impervious to most allied anti-tank weapons meaning that these artillery guns were like mosquitoes. The Tiger E is a German heavy tank that was used in mid-World War II. It's armed with a 88mm gun and a not-so-good machine gun. If we're talking size-wise, think about two shomes stacked onto each other. 57 tons of armor-piercing high-explosive shells. I smell an American. Was I right? I almost forgot to tell you. The Tiger E is built so bulky and squarish, right? Believe this or not, when the Tigris turned 45 degrees, it's a murder weapon, ricocheting everything that shoots at it. Pretty cool, right? Imagine not being able to die just from turning yourself. Shot my track out. This time I will be showing you the air part of this game. This is the BF 109. The Messerschmitt BF 109 was the most popular German fighter aircraft that was used in World War II. Some of these variants were armed with two, two, four cannons on them. These fighters were known to climb to large numbers of altitude mostly relying on kinetic energy to dogfight. I'm going to dive on this A-36. The A-36 is a strike aircraft that had nothing good going for its existence. It's pretty much just a P-51 with extra bombs really. Just a waste of metal. A little more effort and victory will be yours. Going up. Coming down. See how I'm using kinetic energy to my advantage. Going back up because I apparently I suck at this all of a sudden.
This is the famous T30 for 85. Some of you may be familiar with it. Some of you might ask, what even is it? This is the tank that literally slightly put an end to World War II. The Russian T-34 is a medium tank that was the most successful out of them all. Armed with a 76mm gun and with 60-degree slopped armor, it led its way to victory. So successful that the Soviets made other variants such as... Never mind, we will never speak on this topic again. This is a big one coming up. The Tiger II, also known as King Tiger, was supposed to be the replacement of the Tiger I. This one was overall much better, but caused a lot of mechanical failures, such as the transmission constant braking, turret traversal failure, and it would sometimes sink into the ground for being so heavy. It was armed with a 8.8 cm quick 43 L71 anti-tank cannon, which is like the original Tiger I cannon, but on steroids. Put it like this, 270 mm of armor penetration is what I'm trying to say. Oh, it's just a jack panzer. It'll mark it on the map. Attention to the map. No way. No actual Thank way. You. Attention to the designated grid square. Why is it coming to my way? Just ignore it, just ignore it. Phew, that was a close one. Panzerger Tiger or the Ferdinand or the Elephant is a tank destroyer that everyone should fear. Even the heaviest of all heavy tanks should fear this abomination. This tank was designed on the last moments of World War II. It was never used because of the ridiculous amount of mechanical failures it had gotten. This is the I-185. The Polikarpov I-185 was a Soviet fighter that was used for not long in World War II. Apparently, the Soviets were trying to make a three-engine plane, but it was insufficient, so they stopped making them. Since this plane is Russian, you already know that the armament is already overdosed. Three cannons built inside of the plane's engine sides. This is such a terrible idea, because of the flammable ammunition being right next to the engine. I don't even know how they were able to consider these planes good ideas, but they work. Astuka! I've been waiting so long to talk about this plane. Okay, so what if I told you that the makers of Tom and Jerry used this plane? Don't believe me? Listen to this. Back then, the Germans put sirens on the Stuka, 
These sirens were known as Jericho trumpets. When the plane would dive at about 220 miles per hour, the air would activate these trumpets to produce a violent, gut-wrenching sound to mentally damage their enemies. The bombs they would drop would be up to 500 to 1,000 pounds of TNT, which is enough to put a 80-foot hole in the ground. The Junkers Ju-87, also known as Stuka, was a popular dive bomber back in World War II, who knew something bad could put a staple in your childhood. That's a rare find. The VK-45.01 or Porsche Tiger was a German prototype that never got into mass production. Sadly, there isn't much information on this tank. The Dornier Du-335 file or Ameisenberg was a German strike aircraft that was quite effective. It was armed with one X-30mm MK-103 cannon, nose mounted to X-15mm MG-151 cannons. The reason it has two engines facing away from each other was because of the Germans trying to find a way to prevent engine failure. So if one engine gets shot at by maybe anti-air, also, the extra engine gave the plane a whopping 470 miles per hour at max when flying through the air. Sadly, now was the ending. Thank you for watching 11 minutes of greatness.